Consuming too much sugar kind of takes your mitochondria offline. Just like, I couldn't make up more insane dog shit that's wrong than that. That takes the cake. Hey folks, Dr. Mike here for Renaissance Periodization. I'm an exercise and sports science professor at Lehman College in the Bronx, the co-creator of the RPI Hypertrophy app, and I will be appraising some women's health magazines today to see what kind of nutrition, lifestyle, and training advice they are giving to our finest ladies and seeing if it's great, if it's meh, or if it's ugh. Let's read some magazines. I like to first look at the cover and see what's on the cover uh, that's exciting. Muscle Maker. This two-in-one core move works wonders. Fascinating. How Hayden Penetier learned to put health first. Compelling. Page 41. Our protein bar obsessions. Obsessing. And power up the many ways to score off the charts energy. Bold claim. And lastly, a health report. Are you cortisol conscious? Don't be. No, wait. You should be. Uh, I think. Let's find out. So we've got the move of the month. The move of the month is the muscle maker. Thank God. Filed under full body strength level five. This is advanced shit. Combine two classic exercises, a plank and a row, for a core crushing stability challenge. Okay, let's cut right into the criticism here. So it's very standard. This is uh, a, a very traditional move in the female workout world where you're in a push up position with some dumbbells in your hands, and then you row one dumbbell, you put it back down, you row another dumbbell, you put it back down. Um, it is a gigantic poor use of your time as far as an exercise is concerned, because instead of getting a great back workout with a much heavier dumbbell in a much more stable position where your core isn't required to do most of the lifting, you are doing a really crappy, low weight, low focus, very not impressive back work, while at the same time just isometrically contracting your abs, which does not much anything for them for fat loss or muscle growth or anything like that. It's a move I would say is challenging in a way that is not stimulative. It's like if you wanted to train to become the best boxer, you would hit the bag a bunch and that makes you good at boxing. It's also hard. But if every five punches you hit the bag, someone need you in the nuts, it would absolutely make it more difficult. But would it make you better at boxing? No, it could make you marginally better getting need in the nuts. Nobody cares about that sort of thing, I don't think. The ladies that read these magazines, they want to be leaner and more muscular and potentially healthier. This move is not an efficient move to get them there. Oh, I'm sorry. The muscle maker, not something we're using. This sucks. Next. All right, we are to the Protein Bar article where they recommend best buys. These finds won over testers with taste and substance. In rank five is the Total Treasure Mosh Blueberry Almond Crunch Bar. The bar serves fruity blueberry flavor. That's the number one reason I eat bars along with lion's mane mushrooms and 100%, oh my God, there's an exclamation mark there, of your daily dose of vitamin B12, both important for brain function, body and mind, officially boosted. There is a big problem with this, is that they don't mention calories or protein at all, which are the two most important things I need to know about my protein bars. Here's how to pick a good protein bar. If for how many calories it has, it has a lot of protein, you're winning. This Mosh brand has 12 grams of protein. It's keto. It has a lot of vitamins, lion's mane, ashwagandha, omega-3. This is just like a, a cacophony of things you would put into what, well, no offense, what white women buy because they think it's like health. Oh my God, ashwagandha, that's like good, right? Like the earth has that or whatever. It's that. Scott the Video Guy, can we get a total calories for the Mosh brain brand blueberry almond crunch protein bar? Eight fat, 19 carb, 12 protein, 160 calories. 160 calories, 12 grams of protein. For 180 calories, I can get 20 grams of protein out of a pure protein bar. This ain't it. Not the worst bar in the world, but not the best. Let's go to the next one. Morning Maker, Perfect Bar, Coconut Peanut Butter Bar, PerfectSnacks.com. AM Workout Warrior, it's high in vitamin E, 
okay, and a host of other minerals. By the way, it's, it's nominally easy to put extra vitamins and minerals into a bar. It's on a f***ing powder. I don't know why they brag about this. Like copper or niacin, oh my God, which are important for sustaining energy levels throughout the day. That's all nonsense. Vitamins don't do that. You just get enough of them and everything feels fine. If you don't get enough of them, you don't really feel anything. And uh, Scott, the video guy, do we know how many calories it has? Protein. 16 carbs, 27 fat, 22. Calories? 350. <laughs> Folks, 350 calories for only 16 grams of protein. That's 20 plus grams of fat. This is a f***ing candy bar. Post-workout, it's not even ideal because it has so much fat and not enough carbs for the fat that it doesn't even do a good job of replenishing your muscle glycogen stores. It's not enough protein. This just falls right into the line of one of those things that's really a candy bar. Again, sorry to get racial for white women in their 40s and 50s to go like, oh my God, I'm getting like so much protein. I'm like a Wonder Woman. You're not Wonder Woman, Karen. All right, next, fresh baked feel. 88 acres banana bread protein bar, 88acres.com. Now I've had 88 acres bars before, but they weren't protein bars. They were just regular tasty bars that I had for more calories and they are really tasty, but they're not exactly ultra healthy. This six ingredients select, which reminded tasters of homemade banana bread, is powered by pumpkin seeds. Yeah, I didn't know pumpkin seeds were a power source, but somebody notify the nuclear power development industry, which provide the protein and offer crunch. Now, I don't think pumpkin seeds are actually high in protein. Scott, can we get an 88 acres banana bread protein bar? 12 protein in 19 fat. Let me give, give you guys another rule. If there's more fat in the bar than protein, it's not a fitness bar. It's a f***ing candy bar. I guarantee you the banana bread pumpkin seed protein bar from 88 acres tastes amazing, but it's not a mystery because it has a crap load of fat and not so much protein. You get a lot of protein in something with a limited amount of fat, it's challenging to make it taste good but then it's actually a fitness bar. Next up, chocolate choice. Core Foods dark chocolate sea salt plant-based keto bar. Good God, that's a lot of stuff. This rich, decadent option. Again, white women want only one of two things, things that are decadent and things that are nourishing. You look at these magazines long enough, nourishing and decadent, the only two things that are interesting. This rich, decadent option tastes like a candy bar. I bet you it's got macros like a candy bar too, but has no added sugars. Thank God. Because you know, added sugars are so much worse somehow than natural sugars. No, wait, they're just the same. Instead, it's sweetened with all natural alts. Oh my God, I love alt. What's an alt? Like allulose, dates, and mong fruit. Anything natural and exotic, I think is like good because I love nature and it's like good. And like exotics, like other parts of the world and like different people. And like, I love diversity. So like, I love it. Anytime I look at an alt category, it's in the adult film search. Folks, if you like that video and you wanna see the extended cut, then please consider becoming a member. There's gonna be a button right there. See you there. Six protein and 11 fat. Folks, I tell you why it's rich and decadent. It's got a shitload of fat in it and not a lot of protein. Higher protein usually makes things flaky and dry because that's what protein is like. And higher fat usually makes them rich and amazing and delicious. And then so when the protein bar, quote unquote, has six grams of protein, that's kind of a ripoff. That's what it is. A sprinkle of flaky sea salt. Oops, I put the sea in myself. I was, I was just being racist at that point, thinking of course white women want some sea salt. A sprinkle of flaky salt sets it apart. I bet it's delicious. But it is not a health bar or a bar that helps you get fit. It's just a bar with almost no protein and a crap load of fat. Again, a candy bar is competitive at this point. Lastly, and firstly, rank one is a wild card win. Epic Bison Bacon Cranberry Bar from EpicProvisions.com. I've actually had this bar before myself. While it's lower in fiber than the other options, only two grams, yeah, it's made of animal meat. Where the f*** would the fiber come from? This is ideal if you're craving something savory. This is really what this is all about. It's what you're craving. Grass-fed bison and bacon pack in smoky flavor, while cranberries add a tart pop. Notice it mentions nothing about health or macros at this point. It actually only detracts that it doesn't have fiber. Scott, 
How bad is this? I know it only has seven grams of protein, which is terrible. Eight carb, eight fat. So we have more carbs and fats than proteins. This is not a protein bar. It's not health food. This is terrible. Let's move on to the next section. Ooh, food protocol. Most eats are energy dealers, but specific kinds impact brain chemistry. You know the bullshit's coming soon in a way that gives you a more immediate and most important sustainable boost. Immediate and sustainable. Two for the price of one. Here's what you want to fill up on and go easy on. Fill up on nuts, specifically peanuts and almonds. Okay, that's total bullshit. All nuts work super, super well for this regard. So the specifically is pointless. That's just filler, like ChatGPT wrote this or something. The crunchies are an amazing snack choice for, say, an afternoon slump. They're not. Nuts digest incredibly slowly. You won't feel the calories helping you until like hours later when you don't need them anymore. Amazing. Fine work, folks. They toss in a hint of dopamine to your brain thanks to the amino acid tyrosine. Not a limiting factor in dopamine production. For the love of God, your brain does not have a dopamine problem as long as you're eating any kind of food at all throughout the day. And you know what else boosts dopamine? That's right, fasting. That's that, 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 not a food you eat that makes more dopamine. That does not have Good God. Which, according to Dr. Shaw, will help you feel more motivated and energized. Good old almonds motivating and energizing me. Oh, and peanuts. But not Brazil nuts. Those things are f***ing terrible for you. And if you eat a walnut, you're going to die. What else is good? Fill up on chai tea. Chai tea is like this earthy thing, really somehow connected to the peoples of Singapore, which is exotic. And it like nourishes your body, but it's also decadent. I could write a lot of copy for white women in their 40s. Did you know chai is an Ayurvedic tonic made thousands of years ago? So you know it worked because shit thousands of years ago did such a great job. <laughs> to be healing, energizing, and tasty, says Dr. Shaw. The not so secret energy ingredients are spices like cardamom. I mean, like, White bitches love shit like cardamom. Anything that sounds fancy and herb, it's like, oh my God, that's going to nourish me, right? And the dog's like, well, hold on. And it's pretty decadent. Like, oh my God, you know me. Oh, they go on with the spices. Ginger, I love it. Black pepper, ooh. And nutmeg, which I thought is like a candy bar ingredient. But I know. She suggests swapping regular sugar from monk fruit or stevia, uh-oh, we got a video on that, and regular milk for coconut or almond if you're sensitive to dairy. Being that you read this magazine, you probably find yourself sensitive to everything. Fatality. Chai tea, there you go. That's You wanna fill up on chai tea for that energy. I know where it comes from because there's not even any calories in chai tea. Okie doke, so terrible advice on fill up on. Let's see what they say to go easy on. Refined sugar. Hmm. If you eat a lot of sugar, you can make energy without really involving your mitochondria. Nope, that's bullshit. I really try to give it the benefit of the doubt, but that's nonsense. Unless you're somehow just using fast glycolysis from carbohydrates to make the kind of energy you need for regular tasks, which is exclusively or almost entirely energy from oxidative phosphorylation, which actually really does occur in your mitochondria. Uh, says... Pick hard. Oh, they got a lot of people on this article. But as we now know, exercising those parts of your cells is exactly what helps you feel more energized. Don't you exercise your cells with exercise and not like feeding them shit? I don't know. Consuming too much sugar kind of takes your mitochondria offline. Just like I couldn't make up more insane dog shit that's wrong than that. That takes the fucking cake. Says Picard, let them do their jobs naturally. Newsflash, if you eat a lot of natural sugar, it's sugar, and by the time it gets to your cells, it would have the same effect. So I guess fruit turns off your mitochondria, which is somehow bad because they need more practice or something. Good God, who makes this shit up? Let me tell you guys about the RP Hypertrophy app. With over 28 preset programs already in the app, you can choose to make your own, you can modify an existing program, or you can just run the programs exactly as they were written by me personally. This app programs everything for you. Exercises, weights, sets, reps, frequency, the whole thing. After every single workout on every single week, the app adjusts to your unique parameters with every single input. We have over 250 exercises in the app with detailed video tutorial links to every single one. You never have to be confused about technique or form ever again. I'm guessing right now you're pretty interested in the app? Download the RP Hypertrophy app today.
ultra-processed foods, they're proven to increase risk for fatigue, depression, and cardiovascular disease. Those are mostly correlations, but some of them are not so healthy, so I feel that. Notes Dr. Shaw, who defines an ultra-processed food as anything you couldn't make in a kitchen. Watch this. You guys ready? We go back up to chai tea and we find out which of these ingredients we can make in a kitchen. Cardamom. Nope. Ginger. Nope. You guys ever make your own black pepper? Nope. Me neither. And nutmeg. Pretty sure those are made inside of plants or factories or something. Oh, don't worry. You can make monk fruit and stevia in coconut milk in your kitchen. Nope. Looks like those are all processed foods. And our own definition just f***ed us in the ass. Weird. The science is so fun. Shut up, Scott the Video Guy. I'm trying to be serious. Let's see here. Anything you couldn't make in a kitchen. Fine. If a packaged granola bar has nuts, seeds, and honey, you could theoretically make... Oh my god. Yeah, you could theoretically have a fucking mass spectrometer in a kitchen. But you don't. But if you look at the ingredients on a certain bag of orange chips, and we're going to guess that's not the case. You pry my Cheetos out of my cold, dead hands. And they'll be cold and dead quite soon because Cheetos are not that great for eating all the time. Anything you make at home is going to be healthier because it's not ultra processed. You're using real ingredients as Dr. Shaw. Dr. Shaw, you need to go back to school. There's no other way for me to say that. Because in school, you will learn that processing is not an inherently health promoting or health detracting process. If you process milk fractions and you create casein protein out of it or whey protein, they're incredibly processed. I assure you their powder is made in a factory, but they're phenomenally healthy for you. You know what else is processed? Yogurt. Greek yogurt's processed to shit, and holy fuck, it's really, really good for you. But Cheetos and candy bars and all this other stuff, because they have a lot of preservatives and they're really high in calories and they're really palatable, so you eat too many of them, uh, they're not ideal for your health. So yeah, ultra processed foods are often not ideal for your health, but it really does matter what the processing does and what the end result is. So refined sugar, again, it's if it's in the context of you're meeting your calorie needs and you're meeting mostly nutritious foods, refined sugar is totally fine. It's good to keep a cap on it because it can get so high in calories and because refined sugars often don't come with all the added nutrients. So this isn't terrible advice, it's just justified with wrong things that are wrong. Next. Women's Health Exclusive. Let's see, it says recover faster with America's first post-workout pain relief solution. First problem, pain relief and recovery are two completely distinct concepts. Riboflam. Reduce inflammation with clinically proven ingredients and ultra bioavailable phytosome technology. Sounds like bullshit to me, but what do I know? Uh, these statements have not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. I don't know what's in here. $63. 63 bucks, $2 a day, got it. Riboflam is a proprietary phytosome complex. Excellent. Which is turmeric extract, Indian frankincense, quercetin? Quercetin. quercetin. Narrow leaf coneflower extract. <laughs> Zinc. <laughs> Just a bunch of herbs and shit. Quercetin does have some anti-inflammatory properties, but uh, taking it, especially in high doses, after your workout actually interferes with the mechanics, the molecular processes of the workout that make you better. So taking it post-workout would be the wrongest possible time to take this. So if you take the supplement in the morning or you take it in the evening, it's got some good stuff in it that, you know, may help you be a little bit less inflamed uh, and, and give you some good nutrition, micronutrients and stuff. It's like a, like a vitamin supplement. Post-workout would be the wrongest time to use it. And if you have chronic pain post-workout, that's an issue for your doctor. That's not something you're going to take a pill for. Oh, uh, herbs. Yes, yeah, so Women's Health Magazine. Uh, I would say generally quite bad advice. Mostly of like, there's stuff in there they say to do that you just don't need to do. Not very good advice, but very well meant and so well written. So there's some gems you can pick up if you already know things. But I gotta be honest, man, if you don't really know fitness, nutrition, and health, and you pick up one of these and you start trying to learn stuff, you're gonna be slogging through a lot of randomness until you get to actual good stuff. Typical. That sucks. All right. If you guys want to see me read another woman's health mag, parse the claims, say something in the comments. See you guys next time.